So welcome to the next iteration of the HPC Best Practices newsletter. Uh, this month, we're going to be talking about storage. Today, I have Pekka Mananen with me. Um, Pekka, welcome. Thank you. So Pekka, would you like to introduce yourself and tell me a little bit about your role at CSC? Uh, my name is Pekka Mananen. Uh, I'm the director in charge of the Lumi supercomputer here at CSC, which is the uh, National Supercomputing Center in Finland. Uh, well, my role with Lumi has been that I was uh, initially uh, leading the design of the system, then I led the procurement of the system. I've been looking after the deployment, and now when we are finally moving to the full operations of the system, I will be in charge of the management of the operations of the system and the development of it. So let's talk a little bit about storage, since that's the theme for this newsletter. Can you tell me a little bit about what Lumi's storage infrastructure looks like? Uh, Lumi's storage infrastructure is uh, composed of uh, three tiers. So we have a capability tier based on, on flash technologies. We have a kind of a capacity tier based on a more traditional uh, Luster parallel file system. And we have a, then a file management or, or data management uh, service based on object storage. And these uh, three tiers are then orchestrated and, and are used in, in, uh, in kind of a unison to uh, provide the data management infrastructure of Lumi. So what was the purpose of having these three tiers and what does it mean for your researchers? So we started the design from the fact not just for having 10x or 20x everything when, when thinking about the how, how Lumi could uh, look like. But we uh, in, in fact started from the uh, performance uh, requirements uh, and we set the target of, of that we I don't think this, this scale of a system should be below two terabytes per second in, in an achievable uh, bandwidth. And for kind of a cost optimization uh, point of view, we didn't want to even try to put a full, uh, the full, full file system from that, uh, but we had this kind of a, like a uh, tier that is, uh, they can take the uh, IOPS uh, heavy loads or, so, uh, or loads that, workloads that need very, uh, heavy read or write bandwidth we can serve from the uh, capability tier. And of course, we will continue need uh, project term storage, a uh, lot of it, uh, but we didn't like go for kind of a just like an enterprise style storage, but we thought like a traditional luster will be just good for, for this purpose. And of course it serves also as, as a performance or like a high performance uh, storage layer there too. Um, so that's the 80 petabyte uh, Luster file system and the and the and the flash flash pool. Also, it's Luster, but SSD disks. Uh, but and that, that's the size of uh, eight petabytes at the moment. Uh, and in addition, we are having this kind of uh, the data management or service there based on on Ceph uh, object storage. That's in in 30 petabytes in in volume. And the Sizing of this uh, is, is, of course, uh, a budgetary thing uh, and a budget question, but also uh, we wanted to keep the, we didn't want to go for Hamanga storage, of also for this kind of a mean time to failure thing. So we want to have a, like a robust system and uh, we didn't go, go for the kind of extremes of these technologies that, that is basically it's possible of, of these technologies in terms of volume just for, for just having from the kind of like a uh, st stability and then uh, reliability point of view, we wanted to keep keep the uh, the petabyte volumes at that bay. It sounds like when you were building this architecture, you, to architecture you focused on the high speed and um, a good volume um, of storage as well between the eighty petabytes and the thirty petabyte offline and online storage. Um, who are the types of researchers that are going to be using this? So Lumi has been designed as a Swiss army knife for, for a great variety of, of different workloads and, and user communities. So we wanted to sort of be useful for very varied uh, IO and storage needs, ranging from uh, bioinformatics to communities that are 
then say let's say heavy on, on, on read performance like uh, the AI uh, communities and of course at the same time like uh, getting those that are not so uh, sensitive with the storage performance but yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway so so we want to serve basically the anticipated uh, workloads that there is in, in this decade in, in, in Europe and that's why also we need uh, like a versatility on the on the data infrastructure. So with the diversity of research that is being undertaken there, how did you work with your researchers to find that this was the best solution? Uh, perhaps not so much directly with the user communities. Of course, we employed a lot of uh, like an insight from running it, running running from different systems. And uh, as uh, perhaps known for everybody listening, is, is Lumi is a joint effort of, of uh, 10 countries. So at the same time, we were not only limited to the uh, kind of a usage statistics of CSC machines, but we were also employing on the, when, when making the design uh, information from, say, CSCS, that was back then the uh, home of the largest system in, in Europe and the other control team countries. And I had this kind of a, like a good, like a pull together the uh, uh, very uh, varied set of user requirements from different countries and different uh, scientific disciplines. Nice. Okay. So um, what was the process then? So you've obviously researched the type of architecture that was required and now it's been deployed, I think, for over a year. Um, what was that journey? How, how, how did it go from that research to actual deploying and commissioning? Yeah, so uh, so like like I said, so so Lumis storage is nothing extremely special. So there there are much bigger uh, installations uh, in basically both on the on the uh, SSD or the, or the flash pool. For, for instance, NERSC has, has a much bigger flash pool as well as on the on the traditional luster side. So there there are bigger luster installations, and also with there are bigger uh, Ceph installations like your your at uh, yours at that, that Bossy. So uh, we are basically not on the kind of like a uh, extreme or like a final front, frontier of, of any uh, any of the uh, of these technologies. So uh, I would say that the deployment of the storage part has been on the on the kind of like a, uh, on the kind of a doable things on the on the on the system deployment. Uh, so we've been we. Have, We've been now running the uh, the eighty petabyte cluster now in production form from the uh, beginning of the of the system. Uh, the flash pool uh, has been kind of like a it has it it hasn't been on a, in a, in a full time in production, but there's basically nothing um, preventing it using it. So it's just like a uh, ready and tested and, and everything. And the and the Ceph, uh, part is also we are uh, close to uh, opening it for the for the customer use. Nice. Um, so with in the in the name of this being a best practices uh, newsletter, were, was there anything that surprised you or came up that you've you've learned in this journey that you can now pass on to other centers like ours who are doing the same going through the same steps? Uh, perhaps I think that would surprise, but some something that I kind of like I have uh, like it was identified in the, in the beginning and and uh, and and also something that I would like to highlight or perhaps like a, give us as a anticipated best, best practice is uh, the uh, role of active data management. So, so basically the users are forced to uh, like a take care of, of their data. And so, uh, so Lumi is not meant for uh, just like a storing and forgetting data. There are other data infrastructures in Europe for, for that. So it is meant for active storage, meaning that we also found the, in, in the resourcing not only we give node hours on, on CPU and GPU, but, but we also give storage hours. And that kind of like enforces the users for, for, uh, for uh, planning their projects and the, the data usage. And then we can ensure that this system is not uh, sort of like a data project that will make the system full. Uh, also, the, um, we have like a, this kind of like a tiering uh, data solutions there. So the uh, data is, is moved back between tiers. Uh, depending on policies and, uh, the, uh, and the activeness of the data. So uh, on the user level, uh, like a, uh, enforcing of, of, of active data management is something that I, I do think is a best practice on uh, HPC installations. 
That's very cool. It's not um, something I've heard of before, but I can definitely understand the, the concept behind that. So once they've used up their storage hours or the project has come to an end, what happens to the data? There are some uh, like grace periods, but eventually the data will be uh, deleted. So the user have has some some months of time of, of like moving the data out from the system, or just like a uh, tag it as assets. So gonna we uh, okay? I have stored them. Uh, I have like a taken out everything I need. You can like delete the rest. So. Right. So if they if they want to hold on to the data, they've got a certain amount of time after um, their allocation runs out yes. to then offload it onto their hard uh, drives or or however they see fit, and yeah, then it's back to their data. Uh, yeah, and the data of course like a. Uh, Europe has has uh, has and then the upcoming uh, different data infrastructures that can be used for uh, in addition to like uh, just taking them to their their home uh, home servers so that they can of course like uh, use the uh, different uh, distributed data management uh, infrastructures in Europe. Very interesting. So, what does the usage and uptake uh, look like for Lumi? Uh, so far, so good. So basically, nothing. Uh, we haven't um, faced a single project that would be kind of in short of of the uh, for, for for which the storage capabilities or capacities would have been like a too too small, or uh, or something that we um, like a so, so complex data patterns or something that we couldn't like uh, support from from what we have. So how how much storage is being used at the moment? Well, I mean, we are still still waiting for the kind of like the big usage of, of to to ramp up now during this this uh, last batch of the year. So perhaps in November, we can move on to the general availability. So at the moment, we are really seeing only a minor fraction of the of the uh, master file system being used. So nothing nothing uh, nothing nothing very dramatic. Nice, and I think that it always, it also comes back to that concept of a storage allocation as well, so that you know you could have a really high level of use, but it will come back down and be reopened for for access depending on the cycles of your project as well. Yeah, so by definition, we won't run out of, out of space as as you're kind of giving out the the uh, like allocating also the storage. So. Yeah, that's it. That's really interesting. That's very cool. Okay, nice. Thank you. Um, I think. I've kind of come to the end of my questions um, and had a few extra questions thrown in there um, based on the conversation that we've had today. So thank you. Thank you for your time today. And thank you for, again for contributing to the newsletter. Okay. Thank you very much.